everyone. What better thing to do than to do some sewing on a miserable day here. It's pouring in Sussex. It was lovely and sunny this morning and I thought everyone's going to be super organised and excited about sewing and now it's dark, dank and wet. But hopefully we can bring some sunshine inside and I'm going to show you how to sew some broad beans, uh, which I don't know whether any of you know, but autumn is the key time to sow your broad beans because they're a hardy annual, which means that they survive really well during the winter, actually outside in the garden. But we're going to start them off in the greenhouse. So we're gonna sow in the greenhouse today. If you don't have a greenhouse, leave them somewhere cool. You just don't want too much heat, but a shelf in the greenhouse is an ideal place for them. So those of you who are doing a grow along, have you saved um, any card loo roll inserts or do you have some nice long root trainers or long pots? Because that's quite key for sowing a broad bean seed. So get those ready and then your seeds, broad bean seeds, if you've opened the seed packet, are actually really large and really hard. They're like, can you hear that on my zinc table? They're like little rockets. Um, and so what I do is that I would normally get my loo rolls. I would then, I save, um, which I'm going to show you, I save all these little plastic fruit containers from supermarkets. Those of you that have joined a Zoom before, you know I love these. They make the most wonderful seed trays and so do mushroom cartons. Sometimes it's unavoidable to buy some things that are made of plastic um, and you can use big, wider, taller seed trays or flatter ones, but it doesn't really matter. So I'll just use this deeper one to show you. So what I would do is I would collect my loo rolls and I'd fit, each one is going to have one seed sewn in it and I would just row them like that. So I can normally fit eight in a normal supermarket sized punnet, but a seed tray or a flat tray is fine. What I want you to do is to fill your loo roll or long pot with some multi-purpose compost. So we'll do it together. So I'll just get my compost, which is down here. I'll put it on my lap. Um, I did say to bring a sieve as well, but you don't need to sieve, that's for sieving compost, but you don't actually need to for broad bean sowing because broad beans are pretty sturdy seed. So all you do is get some compost and just fill your loo roll or your long pot. It gets a bit messy because sometimes it's quite, a, it's quite a small hole to put the soil in perfectly. But when you've got to nearly to the top, you then need to just give a little gentle tap, just gently so that the soil doesn't come out at the bottom. And it just creates a little bit more room at the top because what you don't want is any air pockets at the top in your container. So if your container, if your soil has air pockets, then the seed possibly may not germinate or may not germinate as well um, because it needs all the soil and the nutrients around it to start growing. So mine is nearly at the top, if you can all see that. Um, so that's ready to go. Then I'm going to add a little bit of water, but I'm not going to add too much because in the winter, things don't evaporate quite as much as they would do in the spring or the summer. So a little bit of water, enough to dampen the top, but not make it too soggy. If you are growing from the loo rolls and you make them too soggy, they can just basically, um, they biodegrade almost in front of you, which is a good and bad thing. You don't want to biodegrade too soon until you've planted them outside. So that's my one ready. Is everybody ready at that stage? I don't see any thumbs up. Um, so now get your broad bean seed and I hope you all found a, a variety that is a special autumn sowing variety. So I mentioned Aquadulce, I think. There's one called Valenciana um, and they're very hard, they're quite big. So they look like this. So with all big seeds, you sow them vertically. So when you get, if you're ready, get your seed and pointing upwards, it doesn't matter which way up it goes, it doesn't matter at all because gravity finds its own way up, but you just want to sew it vertically. Don't sew it flat because the water will pool on the large surface area of the seed and could possibly rot in these, in these cold temperatures. So I'm going to, if you can see that, nudge it right into the center, it doesn't matter if it's not in the center, but right into the center of the loo roll. And I've pushed it about five or six centimeters below, if you can see that. And then I'm going to give it another little tap 
And then if you want to, you can add a little bit more compost on top. It doesn't actually matter too much, but I'm just going to put a little bit more on top. And that is essentially how to sow a broad bean seed. Now, obviously you would sow more than one because one broad bean seed will grow into one broad bean plant, which will produce a lot of pods. But if you're going to go to the effort of sowing them, you need probably 10 to 15 plants. I always have 15. Um, so that's a good number to start off with. And that's a, a really good supply of, of bean seeds for me sort of in um, end of June, beginning of July through to the beginning of August. So anyway, so that's what I do. So you've sown your broad bean seed like that. And hopefully after this webinar, you will be sowing all the rest of them. If you have seeds left over from your seed packet, that's absolutely fine. Save them for next autumn. The seeds will survive. They don't worry about the sell by date. If you have read about sowing broad bean seeds, I'm going to just quickly show you something else. Some people soak the seed overnight before they sow them. Now I'm gonna show you the difference. I don't do that because I tend to get a 99% germination by sowing them this way in a greenhouse. But just to show you the difference, this is one that hasn't been soaked. And this is one that was soaked overnight, just overnight. So it has swelled up to quite ginormous proportions, doesn't it? But the thing with that is if you're going to soak them to give them an extra oomph to get them going, you don't really need to. And the other thing is if you left them in water and you forget about them, the water honks after one day. It really stinks. A little bit like the way a goldfish would stink in plain tap water for two days in the water. It's horrendous. So if you're going to be super organized, just remember you've left them in water. So otherwise you'll think, what is that horrendous smell? And you could forget about it and then they'll all just rot because they rot quite quickly, even though they've got a very hard exterior. So because I am quite a busy person, I don't bother with any of that. I do exactly what I've just shown you and you won't be surprised, it's brilliant. You get a good germination. But if you want to do that, you can soak them, so that's fine. So you have your, your broad bean and ho hopefully you'll have your little containers full of all these loo rolls with your broad beans in. And all you do is just leave them in a light position. So that's why the greenhouse is ideal. It doesn't have to be heated. So I don't know if some of you have heating or not. It is still very mild here in Sussex. It may not be where you are, but um, certainly I don't have heating in mine, but I wouldn't put the heating on if I did. So mine sit just on the bench in the greenhouse. And in about 10 days, you will see growth coming through. I mean, it's quite extraordinary how such a big, hard, fat seed can just grow up quite quickly. Um, and so soon enough, you will see, and I'll show you because I have a blue piece of one that I prepared earlier you will have a, I'm just about to see it, little green shoot. Can you see that one coming through? That was sown 10 days ago. So you'll have that coming through. And then very quickly, almost within days, they become quite big to the one on the end. And then these are two weeks, you have these, which I'm gonna very carefully pull out because, because it's quite, it's been so wet. My greenhouse is slightly damp, dare I say that. Um, and I'm just show you the two weeks of growth. This is almost impossible to actually get out from my pot. To prove to you why you need to have a long rooted container, that's two weeks growth. Can you see the root on that? Which is why I always say you need a long pot. And the root is coming out at the side, which obviously doesn't matter because this container will biodegrade in the soil. So when you've got them in two weeks time, you will have hopefully lots of these. You will, on a mild or a day that isn't raining, you will pick them up and you will go outside and you will plant them outside into the soil, into their final growing position. Don't worry about the weather. It doesn't matter if there's been a frost. I mean, if there's been a frost and the ground is too hard, wait but the frost doesn't matter, the low temperatures won't matter. Just get these in as soon as they are this size or even slightly shorter. These I'm going to get in before this weekend. I don't want them too tall and leggy before I plant them. So what you do is you get your, um, I use a trowel because my soil is quite workable, it's so wet. And you dig a hole as deep as the height of your container, perhaps a little bit more with this lovely root below, and you literally drop each one into each hole about a foot apart 
okay? Because although they're bushy-ish, they're not massively bushy, and I quite like having a self-contained area for my broad beans. So bury them. If you want to bury them to just, the, just the, the height of the luau, that's fine. Or you can do a little bit more if you wish, it doesn't matter. So you could bury them to the, say the saw levels where my finger is to that. And then at the same time as burying them, you must put a stake in for each plant. They don't need it now and they're not climbers, but look at the root now. If you forget and put a stake in next spring, you would be pushing a stake through this lovely, lovely root that is probably 10 times the size of this and you would damage the lifeline of the plant. So um, get a stake and by a stake, I mean anything from a bamboo cane to some hazel that you found in the hedgerows, any, any form of firm sort of erect um, object that you could at some point next spring, you would want to tie your broad bean to it because these stems although they'll be quite big, they're quite brittle. And if there was a wind, which we normally get in early May, it would be a shame to have your broad bean plants, which are say three to four foot high, and a wind came and snapped off half the plant. So that's why you put your stake in now. You don't tie your plant in because they're too diddy. You just absolutely leave them and go off, have try and have a lovely Christmas if we are allowed to. Completely ignore your broad bean plants. There's nothing to do outside. Hopefully the weeds will stop growing. I mean, by all means, go and check on them and see how your babies are doing. But you don't need, they need no maintenance. And then at about next um, February, go out and look a bit closer and you'll see that they'll start to grow again. Because what they've been doing is they've been putting down really strong roots during, well now, late autumn and during the winter. And if we have a frost and lots of snow, don't worry about the broad bean plants. You could go out after some snow and they could be black and you'll think, well, that Julia Parker, she knows nothing. She told me I could plant my broad beans out. Don't worry about it. It's the root that is important. So even though they could potentially look as if they're dead above ground level, their roots are doing all the work below. And soon enough, as the temperatures warm up, you'll have lots of new shoots again and the broad bean will recover. So when they are about three to four foot tall, that is the time you'll want to tie them to your stake. So let's pretend that my pen is part of the stake. So it would be, be growing nicely like that. I would just get a piece of twine and I would do a figure of eight around, just a figure of eight so that the twine crosses at this point and the point of the stem so that the, um, this, uh, the twine, I can't speak, doesn't actually rub and make a cut, it just makes it softer. So do a figure of eight around the twine, stem and the stake, and that is all you do. Once is enough. If they get too tall, and they're nearly five foot tall, which wouldn't be a good thing, I'll tell you why in a minute, you might have to tie them twice, but once is usually enough. Now, when they get taller, I don't let my broad beans grow any more than four foot high. They're not climbers, and you want them to put all their strength going back down into the stem and producing lots of pots. It's the whole point of growing something you're going to eat is you want to eat well from it. You don't want to grow something that you can only have a few pods from. So um, when they are four foot tall, go outside and you'll see, I'm going to use my example, that the top of the broad bean plants will be much bigger than this, but there'll still be an obvious top, a growing tip. And it's usually more fan shaped than that. There might be maybe about five or eight leaves slightly curled round. They're different to the longer flat leaves here. And that is the central growing tip. It's basically taking off the main stem, the top of the main stem. So you would snap them off. They'll be about the size of the palm of my hand. So they're quite big and they're edible. So by all means, put them on the compost heap, but you don't have to. You can stir fry them or steam them. They're quite tasty and full of nutrients. And that stops them from getting too tall. So do that and then very quickly you'll see they're starting to flower and they're pretty flowers, they're purple and white and you'll be rather pleased with yourself and then some people will just ignore them and then come maybe end of June they'll think oh my goodness it's full of lovely pods I'm going to pick them but as you look at the pods you're looking at the ones on the top the more visible ones look at the base of the plant in early June because by sowing your broad beans in the autumn you're going to get an earlier crop and the best pods or the first pods are at the bottom of the plant. So if you do forget and you see all the lovely pods at the top 
don't bother picking the pods at the bottom. They'll be too tough and too big to salvage, or most of them will be. So always check the base of your broad bean plant first. The tasty first pods are at the base. It takes a little bit of rummaging, but you will find them. And then that's how you pick. You then gradually harvest going up the stem. And eventually the ones at the top are pretty much the last ones. Um, the, the other thing about growing broad beans in the autumn is that if those of you have grown them in the spring, you won't get any black fly. They just become much, much hardier and black fly are a real pest with broad beans. So that's another thing for sowing them in the autumn. And the best thing, well, maybe not the best thing, but the other reason is that it's a job done. It means that you've already got a spring crop, spring, early summer crop in the ground and you haven't got to worry about that at your busy sowing time of year next spring. So that's why I sow them now. So 15 plants you need, you need to sow them now I probably would stop the sowing window in about three weeks. So probably at the beginning of December, you can't really sow them then, but you've got a window from now until December. And are you seeing what the growth is like within two weeks? And I mean, I used to hate raw beans, obviously at school, they were boiled and tasted of disgusting powdery bean, but I love them now cold in a salad and I always pick them young because I don't want the hassle of those leathery jackets if they get too big. So they're my tips on broad bean sowing. Does everybody understand that? Yes, good. Okay, so remember, yeah. vertically, not too much water. Oh, that's the other thing. In your next two weeks of them sitting in the greenhouse, if it does remain wild, mild, just give a little bit of water, just top up a little bit, but not too much. I think these are a good example. They're damp, but they're not soaked because obviously the, the card, can you see that one is quite a good example. You don't want them fully soaked because the bean could rot because daylight hours are getting shorter. Okay, so I shall move my exhibit A off and then that. Um, and with the compost, use any multi-purpose compost. Raw beans are pretty hardy and with regards to the soil they're in, it doesn't matter. They pretty much will grow anyway. So you do, they, they're not too sort of choosy. You don't need to be too precious about that. Um, and then right at the end of the season, so I sow mine now, my rule of thumb usually is that we harvest them on Father's Day, which is the middle of June. It's my husband's birthday. It's always our first broad bean salad. And um, then I will pick them until about the end of July and then that's it, they're done. If you wanted to extend your season, by all means sow some in the spring, but you will expect black fly. Okay, so that's the thing. I mean, they will grow very quickly and they will catch up quite quickly on your autumn sown ones. But just remember, I don't think it's worth it and you don't want an infestation. And then at the end of the season, it's very easy to miss one or two pods. So they'll be too hard and tough to eat. So save them and dry them and they'll be your seed for sowing next autumn. And don't forget to label them because it's easy to forget what you've saved. Although a broad bean is an unusual looking bean seed, isn't it? It's different to all the other beans. So hopefully you wouldn't get confused, but it's always quite handy to do a label. For those of you who know me, I love lolly sticks and um, mark a pen on a plastic bag, but make sure if you're going to put them in a plastic bag, that they're fully dry because otherwise they could sweat and rot.